Hello and welcome to another lecture on three dimensional geometry. Today we shall be discussing about planes and we shall be starting with the equations of a plane in vector and Cartesian form. Later we are going to find the value of the angle between two given planes and finally we shall conclude this lecture by discussing some numerical problems based on the concepts that we are going to discuss in the coming segments of this lecture. In this section we shall find the vector and Cartesian equations of a plane perpendicular to a given direction and at a given distance from the origin. So starting with the vector equation first, for this let us consider a plane let's say P1 which is at a distance of P from the origin O and let N be a unit vector perpendicular to the plane. Now this N is directed away from O as shown in this figure. Next we have a point N which is the foot of the perpendicular from origin that is O to plane P1. Then the vector ON is equal to P into unit vector N cap. Now let P with position vector R be any point then P lies in the plane with only condition that vector NP is perpendicular to the unit vector N because N is perpendicular to the plane P1. It is perpendicular to every line which lies in this plane. Thus point P lies in this plane if and only if the scalar product of NP and unit vector N is equal to 0. That is, if the scalar product of vector R minus P into unit vector N and unit vector N is equal to 0. That is, point P lies in the plane P1 if and only if the scalar product of vector R and unit vector N is equal to P, which is the distance between O and N. This is the required equation of the plane P1 on which point P lies. Next we are going to find the Cartesian equation for a plane that is perpendicular to a given direction and at a given distance from a origin. Let us consider L, M and N be the direction cosines of O, N and P has the coordinates of x, y and z. Then the unit vector n cap is equal to l i plus m j plus n k and vector r is equal to x i plus y j plus z k. Now on substituting these values of unit vector n cap and positional vector r in equation that we have obtained in the previous segment of this lecture which is the vector equation of the plane and is stated as the scalar product of vector r and unit vector perpendicular to the plane which is n cap this is equal to p which is the distance of point n from the origin o so now substituting the values of n cap and vector r as is specified in equation number a into equation b we have the scalar product of vector r which is equal to xi plus yj plus zk into value of n cap which is equal to li plus mj plus nk which is equal to p as is specified in equation number b that is lx plus my plus nz is equal to p this is known as the normal form of the equation of a plane. Next we are going to find the value of the angle between two given planes. From the figure shown we can easily make out that the angle between two planes which are P1 and P2 is equal to the angle between the normals of these planes. Thus the angle between two planes is defined as the angle between two normals of the given planes. 
in order to find the value of the angle between these two planes that is P1 and P2 first we are going to consider the vector forms of the given planes thus let a P1 and P2 be two planes and have the vector equations as R vector into vector N1 is equal to D1 similarly for plane P2 we have the vector equation as R into dot product of N2 vector is equal to D2 now we know that the angle between the planes that is P1 and P2 is equal to the angle between the normals of these planes that is the angle between the vector N1 and N2 therefore if theta is the angle between the given planes then cos of theta is equal to the scalar product of vector n1 and vector n2 divided by the modulus of vector n1 and modulus of vector n2. Thus the value of the angle between these two planes which is equal to theta is equal to cos inverse of scalar product of n1 and n2 vectors divided by individual mods of n1 and n2. Next we are going to find the value of the angle between two given planes when the equation of the plane given are in Cartesian form. So let a1x plus b1y plus c1z is equal to d1 and a2x plus b2y plus c2z equal to d2 be the Cartesian equations of the given planes and let n1 and n2 be the normal vectors of these planes. Then Vector n1 is equal to ai plus bj plus c1 k and vector n2 is equal to a2i plus b2j plus c2 k. Now if theta is the angle between these planes then the value of cos theta is equal to the scalar product of n1 and n2 divided by the individual mods of vector n1 and vector n2. Now replacing these values by the above mentioned values we have cos theta equal to a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 whole divided by the mods of n1 and n2 which is equal to root of a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square into root of mod of n2 vector which is equal to a2 square plus b2 square plus c2 square. Thus when the given equations of the plane are in the Cartesian form then we can evaluate the value of cos theta in this form. Next we are going to find the condition of perpendicularity of two planes. Now two planes are perpendicular if and only if the value of angle between two planes is equal to 90 degree which means that the value of cos theta is equal to 0. That is for vector form of equations of a plane the scalar product of vector n1 and n2 is equal to 0 and for Cartesian form value of a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 should be equal to 0. Next we are going to consider the condition for two planes to be parallel. Two planes are parallel if and only if their normals are parallel that is vectors n1 and n2 are parallel which implies that vector n1 is equal to lambda n2 for some scalar lambda. This is for vector form of equations of the plane. Now if we have the equations of the plane in the Cartesian form 
then two planes are parallel if and only if a1 divided by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 which is equal to c1 by c2. Next we have a problem in which we are required to find the angle between the planes whose vector equations are the scalar product of positional vector r and 2i plus 2j minus 3k is equal to 5 and the scalar product of r and 3i minus 3j plus 5k is equal to 3. Now the normals to the given planes are along the vectors n1 vector and n2 vector respectively. Now n1 vector is equal to 2i plus 2j minus 3k and vector n2 is equal to 3i minus 3j plus 5k. Now the value of cos theta as discussed earlier is equal to the mod of the scalar product of n1, n2 divided by individual mods of vectors n1 and n2. Now substituting the values we have cos theta equal to mod of 2 into 3 plus 2 into minus 3 plus minus 3 into 5 whole divided by root of modulus of n which is equal to 2 square plus 2 square plus minus 3 square which gives us a value of root 17 multiplied by the mod of n2 vector whose value is evaluated as root of 3 square plus minus 3 square plus 5 square and thus we get the value of mod of n2 vector equal to root of 43. Thus we have the value of cos theta as 15 divided by root of 731 or we can say that theta is equal to cos inverse of 15 divided by root of 731. Thus we have evaluated the value of the angle between two planes whose vector equations were given to us. With this we conclude another lecture which was based on the equations of planes and the angles between two planes whose equations are given to us.